Julian's come back, but you have to consider him. Yep. Like I know there's people out there saying, you know, he's past it, but I I, I don't think they're watching. That just watch him, watch yeah. like just just watch him. Yeah, just just on that being able to see that. Yes, yeah, again, it's, you talk down the aerial skills, and you know we pride on ourselves being able to to stop people to try to get up for the ball, but his ability to to have a knack of just understanding where the escorts are of us trying to, to block or going up for the ball and his work rate getting up for the ball. Um, he's been fantastic around there, not just in our game, but um, in the first game as well. And yeah. His work rate as well, his, his work rate as well mate. Um, you know, you don't get to see a lot of on because you see it in one angle, but his ability to take the backfield cover, working in, working with his outsides in that pendulum, um, again as well, he also just defended in the front line as well considering with his defense, he's a big man and, you know, they put him in that kind of transition area a couple of times to, to beefen it up. So, no, look, mate, I think Jules has been absolutely impressive and I talked about it last week around, he looks like he's got that enjoyment factor and he's, he's enjoying being back home and you know, having the chance to play with Artie Severe as well, his brother, um, you know, it's probably just adding to the field of his fire where he's enjoying being back home and playing for a team that he loves to play for. And he looks in mean shape. Oh, he does. I was just about to get excited about Artie Savia then. <laughs> How good's he? <laughs> God. Yeah, it's so much, so much fire. Geez, so I'd be welcome fire. at their dinner table, wouldn't I? Uh, yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> I hope they're listening. Uh, but Julian, I mean, let's talk a bit more about him. Has he come back as an, as an improved player? Are these things that we saw out of Julian before he left, or are these new skill sets that we hadn't seen before from Julian? No, I don't think he's come back as an improved player. I just think he's come back as a, as a settled and happy player. Uh, man off the field and I think he's just happy mm. he, I just think his happiness and his and his joy um, of his time with his family and being back with his, his wider family and, and um, back in New Zealand I think it just is is just emulated on he just looks happy I, I don't know that's just me looking there you know because he's always had the rugby skill set I don't think he's an improved uh, rugby player I think he's always had that naturally um, he's he's just come back and he just is playing with, I don't know. It looks like a freedom, and and uh, just a real want to do well for that jersey, and a real want to back up his brother as a skipper. Yeah, and That's, what has he got to lose? Yeah, nothing, with everything to gain. Yeah. Um, and 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 there might be a little bit of a chip there to prove a few people wrong. I don't know, but I, I think yeah. he's doing that at the moment. I think as well, if you look before before he left, um, you think about all the, the time he did with the All Blacks. If you think about from the time he finished school, going through the age grade system and then playing you know, relatively early on for the All Blacks, and then I guess just the kind of media attention that was always surrounding him. And if you think around his last probably maybe 24 months in New Zealand, yes, he was playing well, but then you know probably wasn't as consistent as he is was he, when he was in, early in his career. So... I think just getting away and then, you know, experiencing something different in a different country and then, you know, I guess maybe having a realisation and an understanding of like how good it is to be in New Zealand and to play in New Zealand. And then we've already addressed it around, you know, being a part um, with family and, you know, you, you can imagine that, you know, he's got a family as well and, and then being back with Artie and then seeing that wider community of his family as well that Chip alluded to, I think it's just added to that as well. And I think, again, having a chip on your shoulder as well, I think. Mm. He's come back in really good nick and, um, you know, it's energetic and, you know, it's showing on the field. So I think it's just all a, um, a combination of all those things. And at least, look, he's going to be great for the, for the Hurricanes moving forward. He's a player who I don't think gets the credit for overcoming adversity that he had. I remember that first season he had with the Canes. He'd come out of the under-20s and people were saying, this is the new Jonah, you know, which is the worst thing to be tagged with in the entire world. Had a tough 2011 in his first season with the Canes and came back in 2012 as an absolute weapon. He's a guy who actually can go away and work on things and has a determination to do it that I don't think people give him credit for. He's yeah, I th they probably don't because he did come back and just carve so much that they just probably forgot about 2011. Yeah. And it's just like you only sort of remember how, that how great he was and, and he was great for so long that that's just yeah. forgotten about, do you know what I mean? And, uh, but I think, I think he will um, command that respect now because of what, once he left here and, and went over to France and obviously it was well documented, the, the um, I don't know, the owner or whatever went on over there. Well, yeah. um, and then coming back here, I don't know, he just seems at peace, I don't know, he just seems a lot happier um, and, and that's certainly shown in the way he's playing. What do you do with Celeste Rayasi? He's a guy who once again showed us exactly what he can do with ball in hand. The odd drop here and there which seems to, to go along with it as well. 
How do you fit him into this team? Well, he's in the 23, yeah. for, for starters. And um, I, I think there's one thing that I always like to say when this discussion happens, because sometimes, you know, guys come on and they make a massive impact and people are like, oh, he's got to start, you know. But they come on and make an impact and, and it's against tiring bodies at 60 minutes and it's a lot, there's a big difference between making that impact at super level at the start um, then coming on at 60 against tiring bodies and making the same impact. I'll just put that first. Um, I think Julian's playing some great footy, and I think he has to stay in the 11, personally for me. Uh, reason being is his kick chase efforts, his aerial skills um, around not only the box kick, but as we saw for um, Umanga Jensen's try. I think it shows his physical conditions he's in, the way he's getting up in the air and winning that um, air battle. Um, not only for that try, but um, a lot of those box kicks and, and getting that ball back. And then just his work off the ball and, and finding and touches. And then direct carries off set piece we know he's so good at. He's always getting that gain line carry and, and he's, he's doing the work around there. And you can only get the ball that you delivered. And, and for me, both games, he's, he's shown plenty. Maybe there's, there's space for him on the right wing. Um, you know, not to say that Wes Houston hasn't uh, performed either. Uh, but there is maybe potential for him to have a crack there. Purely based on maybe Mita 10 Cup form, uh, he was probably one of the players, if not the player, um, of the Mita 10 Cup. I know Flau Fakatava uh, won the Dwayne Monkley, but for me, he was just an absolute standout. Uh, definitely a level below um, Super Rugby, I know that, but we, we do, I agree, we have to see more of him uh, because he is just electric and, and a game changer. He can certainly uh, light things up. So... I think of what we saw in the 23 minutes he played, I think he showed enough to the coaches mm. that we will see more of him, if not uh, starting, uh, a, an earlier entry into the, into the game off the bench. By the end of the game, people are laying into their forward pack and saying, what's going on with this team? They're just a bunch of backs. Like, what do you think about the way that the Canes forward pack is going? I, I think it's unfair in that sense. I just think the, the Crusaders were clinical in um, taking advantage of the ill discipline. I don't think it's a, a skill set thing or a physical thing or a, um, a Hurricanes forward pack versus a Crusaders forward pack. I'll give you an example. Um, I suppose just after half time, it's a Hurricanes scrum put in and uh, they get done for leaning in. I think Fraser Armstrong, and it's a free kick. From that, obviously, it becomes Hur uh, Crusaders put in. And from that, they go blindside, Richie Moanga in the wet, pins the corner, right? Puts the pressure straight back on to the Hurricanes. From there, the overthrow, Cody Taylor scores. That's only been put in there just from a skill set point of view rather than a physical prowess point of view. So you can easily say, oh, the Type Five's not manning up or the Type Five's not doing their job. Well, it's not actually about the prowess or the, or, or the nature of the beast. It's actually just a technical thing. Mm -hmm. So you can't, I think sometimes we get caught up and we just don't actually look at the game as a whole.